Good morning, everyone. And thank you very much for being here. I would like to especially thank the ASCO, uh, and specifically for this press release, Ms. Christina and Ms. Wendy, for being uh, amazing uh, colleagues to work with. I'm delighted today to be here uh, and present these results on behalf of uh, countless CLL patients to whom this drug has been a blessing from God. There are um, many investigators who have contributed to this work, and I find myself privileged to stand on their behalf here. And lastly, the very dedicated team uh, convened by Janssen, uh, which is now the Helios team, who has brought this data forward and the study to its flourishing. This is a randomized phase three double-blind study in relapse CLL, or SLL. And it's one of the largest study, to my knowledge, in relapse CLL patients and therefore holds a lot of um, weight in terms of how this is going to alter the care of patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia with relapse disease. For those who are aware of CLL knows that this is an incurable cancer. And the goal of therapy most of the time is to induce remission in patient and try to maintain that remission as long as possible. CLL is a hematologic malignancy or leukemia and therefore, um, most of the patients at the end of, uh, of any therapy actually relapse. The standard of care for relapse CLL patients has been bendamustine and rituximab for a very, very long time. And this has been the cornerstone of treatment for these particular patients. Over the last decade or so, increase in uh, understanding of the biology of CLL has led us to know that signaling through BTK or signaling to B-cell receptor pathway has a critical role in the survival of CLL cells. This signaling pathway finally was able to be tamed by development of the drug Ibrutinib, which target B BTK or Brutin tyrosine kinase. As a result of this drug, you are able to clip this signaling pathway so that the survival signal no longer reached the core of the cell that allow, is to pro allow it to proliferate. In fact, you have, are already aware that this drug was approved by the FDA and is now endorsed by a group of experts within the NCCN, or National Comprehensive Cancer Network, uh, as one of the preferred therapies for patients with CLL who have relapsed disease or those or any of the CLL patients who have aggressive 17Q deletion. The phase three Helios trial is one of the amazing trials that has been done in relapse setting, which is the second, third, lar uh, second uh, largest trial uh, for this drug in this particular setting. It is the first trial that is a randomized placebo controlled trial, and so holds a very unique uh, position in the development of ibrutinib. The design of this uh, study incorporated 578 patients that were randomized across 21 countries in a one-to-one -one fashion. Patients were given bendamustine or rituximab or BR regimen with combination of either a brutinib or a placebo. Six cycles of chemoimmunotherapy was given and thereafter patients were either maintained on placebo or a brutinib. During the conduct of this trial, emerging data came from a sister trial that showed that the brutinib is highly effective, and this you had heard from Dr. John Bird last year. As a result of this uh, uh, of finding, w the, uh, the, the schema was altered to show, uh, to ha in, in allow patients who had progressed on the placebo trial to go on to receive a brutinib. And this has implications on the overall survival analysis that we did. Now, this is what has changed the world in CLL today. Today, the world for CLL relapse patient would be different because of this particular curve. This is the primary endpoint of the study, which is progression-free survival. At the median of 17 months, the progression-free survival has not been reached for a brutinib arm, versus the control where it is about 13 months. The hazard ratio on this particular uh, curve is 0 0.20, which translates into 
uh, reduced risk of progression or death by, by 80%. And this is remarkable. You cannot get a better hazard ratio than this. So this brings a lot of joy to see that a, such an impactful therapy altering the course of the disease so early. One of the points that I would like your attention is that the, the curve started to differentiate significantly earlier or four months into analyses. And that is a great testimony of how soon the impact of um, this uh, regimen was. Other parameters such as overall response rate was also significantly enhanced by the combination of ibrutinib to BR. 83% roughly were in remission or overall response in comparison to only 67% who received placebo. The overall impact of BR and imbrutinib combination was a 37% decrease in the risk of death as a result of this combination. And this was noted despite the fact that 90 patients were crossed over to receive abrutinib at the time of progression when they were on um, placebo arm. The side of effect profile was very tolerable and expected for each of the individual drugs that were in, the, in this regimen. So I'll conclude here by again highlighting the fact that addition of abrutinib to the BR regimen in the relapse CLL setting has resulted in a remarkable improvement uh, in overall response rate with an impressive decrease in the risk of progression and death by 80%, specifically death from uh, disease by 37%. And this, this becomes one of the most important changing point in the history of CLL where the treatment of CLL patients will no longer be BR, but BR with abrutinib. Thank you very much.